Hello my friends, I'm Bee and this is Bee's Intuition and today we're going to do a reading um, and it's going to be about what does spirit think you're ready for, the collective, okay? So let's just dive right in, okay? Um, please and thank you spirit. What is the, what is the collective ready for, please and thank you? What is the collective ready for, please and thank you? Ready for. Thank you. Okay, these cards are pretty intense. So what you're ready for, um, starting out with justice. <laughs> um, you're, you're ready for things to start working in your favor, which I feel like, like, don't, <laughs> I think we all feel ready for that, right? Um, the high priestess also came out. I feel like Maybe something about like you're ready to um, go into like ne next phase of your spiritual awakening or something. Or maybe it's like um, you're ready to start trusting in your intuition more. Or your downloads from spirit even. Well, we're going to clarify all these, but I just want to show you. Uh, the temperance card actually came out in the reverse. I think that is quite interesting. So I'm going to definitely clarify that. Um, before I clarify, my initial thoughts are maybe you're afraid of healing something here. And this is interesting because the next card in the last card that came out is the Two of Cups. You're ready for love. Why do I feel like that healing is attached to this? I mean, on the Temperance card, the traditional Rider Waite tarot deck, it depicts like an angel holding two cups. So maybe that's where I'm getting this, but interesting. I feel like this Temperance card in the reverse has something to do with this cup, or uh, these two cups. Um, the two cup, two of cups. Oh my goodness, I can't talk. But I think that there's definitely some sort of significant message with this one. It could be regarding your own fear of healing something. Oh, and then bottom of the deck, eight of wands. You're ready to start communicating maybe with somebody or just in general. Uh, maybe there's uh, things that you can say, maybe just speaking in general. You're ready to speak your mind, speak about your own experiences maybe. Okay, let's start clarifying. Starting out with that justice card. Please and thank you, spirit. What did this justice card clear? Oh, thank you. Can you clarify anything? Ooh. Any things? Okay, I'm just gonna see. Every time I go to ask, it's just like, here you go, here you go, here you go. I swear I can't make this stuff up. Okay, making sure my mic's still on. How embarrassing if it weren't. Oh my gosh, this is. Y'all, this is going to be a really good reading. So, geez, Louise. Okay, anyways, focus. <laughs> Ooh, gotta. There's just so many things that I want to like point out before I even get started. So, clarifying that justice card, starting out with the Four of Swords, the Strength card. I can't make this up, dude. The Wheel of Fortune. The Two of Cups. Double confirmation for the Two of Cups. Okay. There's definitely love going on. Anyways, the last one that came out, Nine of Pentacles. And 
last but certainly not least, bottom of the deck is the Empress. I almost feel like you're ready with that Empress at the bottom of the deck. You're ready to start embodying the Empress energy and believing that you have that Empress energy. There's something about being powerful and confident about that power. I feel like something about believing in yourself, believing that you are this powerful, gorgeous energy. Um, and like everything, because especially the Empress, like she doesn't go out and do, she lets things come to her. And so I feel like maybe that's a big message in this reading is like, you're ready to have things come towards you instead of you always putting in the work all the time is what I'm getting from that. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Ugh. Okay, so I see. So I'm actually like, this is... Although it's not showing up in the cards, I'm getting a backstory here. I think that you may have had maybe an injustice, you know, maybe a justice card in the reverse. Maybe you had, uh, that could just be your past of relationships in general, or it could be a specific person from your past that things did not work out with. And it felt like maybe you were, you definitely did not receive your justice. Um, but I see you after whatever happens happened in the past or maybe currently maybe this is you currently um going through it a little bit because i see you kind of taking a step back to focus on yourself um i like the four of swords in the way of like what knowledge do we gain from silence you know if we're spending time away from like stimuli and we are just sitting in silence. Do we receive um, downloads from spirit? Do we receive uh, like guidance or um, does our intuition come through clearer when we sit in silence? So I almost feel like you could have had this time of really sort of pondering things within yourself, maybe within your reality, but definitely spending a lot of time inside of your mind, uh, maybe feeling that silence or leaning into the silence to see what it can teach you about yourself, about your life. Um, it's actually quite beautiful. And I feel like when people take the time to do this, that's when everything starts coming to them because they've taken the time to really go within, take care of themselves. Self-care is a part of this. Um, and just like find those answers. If, if there is a need for answers, that's the other thing too. It's like maybe you don't necessarily need answers, but rather just that calmness of mind and maybe practicing with silence is a good way for you to build a calmness in your mind because it feels like your your thoughts could have also been kind of going a little bit crazy lately i'm getting and like there's a need to kind of organize those thoughts um yeah like organizing your own thoughts in order to see maybe a situation more clearly or just life in general your personal life even. Um, yeah, and then the strength card. I feel like this Four of Swords is what this strength card is referring to, actually. I think that in order to go into this time of being in silence or resting, taking care of yourself, focusing on you, taking a step away from, a step back away from the world, um, I feel like that really shows your amount of strength that is it within you and also of resilience. Like I feel like a very strong sense of resilience, especially if what you did experience in the past was an injustice of some sort. I feel like you may feel the hand of spirit very much guiding you during this time, or maybe when you were in this kind of phase being with yourself, spirit, I feel like, I think there's also a reassurance here that you're doing what is right for you. So like when you take those times out to maybe rest, just take care of yourself or focus on those internal thoughts or something, I feel like um, 
spirit wants to tell you that that's exactly what you were supposed to be doing. So even if you feel like you're not productive or you didn't feel like you were being productive, that's okay because it's all part of this plan. And I feel like maybe spirit offered you some sort of sense of comfort, like knowing that this is necessary and it will lay the groundwork for things that are yet to come. But I also see you trusting the divine with the strength card. There's a sense of trust of like, like I might not have all the answers, but I know spirit has all the answers. And so as long as I'm tapped into spirit, I'll be okay. That's what I'm getting really strongly with that. I'm also getting a message about reconnecting with animals. Um, so maybe like you've just been spending more time with your pets or maybe your friend's pets or your neighbor's pets, you know, whatever. Maybe stray animals, watching squirrels, I don't know. I feel like maybe you're connecting back to those, like, um, the things that, like, bring you happiness. Like, in a very deep way. Um, and then, you know what? I think, actually, this is indicating that when you are in this energy, of taking a step back, focusing on yourself, trusting in spirit, trusting in the plan, even if it looks confusing, even if you don't see how this could possibly work out. Um, like you kind of do this releasing of control and you let things be as they are. And I feel like as soon as you do that, something really good is gonna happen for you. I'm getting actually two things. It's all part of divine timing with that wheel of fortune. I feel like it's like when you step into this role of ease and of, oh, this could also be indicating you embodying more so the Empress energy. Because the Empress knows that she needs to um, prioritize rest because that's like shows her value and how she invests in herself first and foremost. So I feel like, yeah, maybe you start to step into this Empress mode and then things are actually starting to work out for you. And maybe it just needed to go, maybe you just needed to go through a rougher time um, that led you to this like next step in your journey um, where you're kind of releasing control, focusing on yourself, um, listening to spirit, and trusting, I think that's a whole nother part of it, is trusting spirit, trusting that things are gonna work out okay. And I feel like that's what's bringing in this justice, this sense of justice in your life. Cause this is all clarifying the justice card. So Wheel of Fortune indicating that divine timing is at play here. Um, and honestly, like, cause I'm like, right now in this reading, I'm, I'm picking up that this figure is sort of representing you and like uh, it looks like this figure has their eyes closed. And so it's almost like when you're not even looking for it, here it comes kind of thing. Um, and I think it's both of these things. Um, two of cups, like I think that maybe you could be attracting somebody that is more on your level, uh, someone with a good give and, give and take balance uh, between the two of you. Um, I think you would see yourself in this person, but you would still have differences that keep it interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. And then like the nine of pentacles is you gaining a lot of abundance in your life um, within your surroundings. Maybe um, it could be financial um, increase or just making things um, something to do with material comforts, feeling very much like stable within your 3D. So maybe just like the sense of stability as well could be coming in for you, but I, it could very well be indicating that you're gonna be coming into some sort of financial abundance as well. It feels like your mind is in a very good place and I don't know if you feel this right now or Maybe it's the future when your mind's in this good place, but it's like, it feels very positive. Um, and I almost am getting like this sense of you 
practicing gratitude for the things that you have and then you're surprised when even better comes along do you know what i mean i think there's something about you that likes to be surprised by the universe i think that especially if you're in like in this more positive mindset i feel like you're very much like trusting that the, the divine whatever it's bringing to you it's going to be good and it almost feels it almost feels like um there's an inner knowing of i deserve this and I'm not trying to say that that's like a bad thing or, you know, arrogant or anything like that. I think it's actually quite beautiful because I'm also getting, you know, it hasn't always been this way for you. I feel like there's something about like seeing the fruits of your labor now because it feels like you've been doing stuff on your own for quite some time. And it's almost like finally things are starting to pay off or things are finally like showing up in your life in the way that you hope that they would um but it you know it feels more i think this is also has to do with manifestation because it feels like this sense of like i know it's coming to me it's just a matter of time and it also feels like it could be coming way sooner than you think that it will because i feel like you're very much in this mode of like okay i trust you divine i am not gonna try and force things i'm not gonna try and push for things i'm just gonna let up my feelings or need for control and I'm just gonna relax into it and flow with it and you know when it comes it comes and then it's like boom there it is yeah it really does feel so synchronistic as well like everything is going to come together exactly as it was meant to and I, I feel like this is one of those moments where you look back in hindsight and you're like, oh, I'm so glad that this, this, and this happened because otherwise I wouldn't have been there on this certain day and I wouldn't have met this person or, you know, whatever, just given an example. Um, but it feels like, yeah, like everything that has happened has happened for you to come to this place in which you are receiving all of your blessings. This is so pretty so far. Like, I really like this reading so far. Okay, let's go into the High Priestess because that's very curious to me. Although I think that it could be along the same sort of message, but let's see. Please thank you, Spirit. Ooh, anything else for that High Priestess? Please thank you. Anything else for that High Priestess? Please thank you, Spirit. deck is still the empress i think that you actually i don't know if you know this or not but you may actually be in the empress mode right now maybe you're not like aware that you're embodying this or something because it's like it feels like like it's here to be like this is you <laughs> this is you here so clarifying that high priestess we have the queen of swords the Lover's card, the Devil card, the Hanged Man. So three out of four of these cards are Major Arcana here. So it's something quite significant. So, okay, I'm just going to say this before I forget the message. I feel like this Queen of Swords energy is you being a little bit guarded around somebody. I think you flip-flop with this person. I think you think that they're both a blessing and a curse. I'm just saying. Or maybe this person genuinely shows up like a blessing in some moments and then like a curse in another moment. 
because there's something very conflicting especially with the lovers being followed by the devil like that's significant I'm almost even getting like maybe your intuition doesn't quite know what to make of this person or maybe a situation this could also be indicating a situation of some sort if it's not romantic something that just makes you go back and forth on it like crazy like is this good for me or is this bad for me and I feel like until you know for sure you're just like stay away <laughs> whatever that situation is like stay away from me yeah it feels like your intuition may be a little bit conflicted at the moment but then the hanged man comes in to say you will find clarity but it may take a period of discomfort in order to find that clarity I'm almost, oh, this is so interesting because it's like, I'm seeing you being closed off to someone or something because it like messes too much maybe with your emotions, mental health even, like it's just like, it's, it's like an on off switch, like it's like so significant, the difference in moments and either that's just how you feel about the situation or how that situation makes you feel um and then the hanged man i feel like this period of discomfort of like maybe not being able to trust your intuition or not being able to see things so clearly being in this Queen of Swords energy that's like a little bit more guarded, maybe a little bit more um, strict about their boundaries. It could be leading to the answer. If there's a if there's an answer that you would like, or is there if there's a question that you would like answered, it feels like this is all leading to the answer, and it may be uncomfortable for a period of time, but it may be exactly what you need in the timing that you need it. I think I'm definitely going to clarify the lovers and the devil a little bit further. Maybe the hangman as well. Or maybe I should just clarify the hangman. Yeah, maybe I'll clarify the hangman because that probably would tell me more so what actually is happening. Um, and then the empress card again is at the bottom of the deck, but it started to slide off and... Oh, okay. It was starting to reveal the two of wands. I almost feel like you want to make plans about something, but you don't know, and it may have to do with the situation. It's like you want to make plans, but you're not sure what's going on. So it's like before I make any plans, I need to be certain. Maybe it has to do with long-term plans. So if it's a relationship, you're like, I don't want to, you know, put all my eggs into this basket and have that basket flip over. You know, I don't know. I can't think of a good metaphor but like you know like I don't want to put all my hopes and dreams into this person if they're acting so crazy back and forth so conflicting or if it's a job you know I don't want to put my heart and soul into a job if it's just gonna be an emotional roller coaster you know okay let's go on and clarify that that hanged man please and thank you spirit what is this hanged man trying to indicate to us? Please and thank you, spirit. The hanged man. Yes. Interesting. This is so interesting. first card that came out to clarify that hanged man the seven of swords came out in this direction and I was saying how this moment of discomfort could be exactly what you need to lead you to an answer of some sort
it was triggered by the seven of swords that caused you to go into this time of reflection or discomfort this time of discomfort that helps you see things more clearly it was somebody being suspicious or a situation being suspicious like sketchy behavior caused you to start questioning something maybe that you thought originally was ideal but then the closer you looked you saw the the cracks because it, it really is telling me that maybe this is what your intuition was telling you something's not right with this situation or this person they're hiding something or they're trying to like do something here i'm also getting greedy maybe somebody here was greedy so it could even be happening it could even have to do with um, a, like a job or something, like a boss being greedy or something. But whether it's a relationship or something else, it feels like there was deception, sneakiness, and greed. And I don't think you vibe with that very much. This is so interesting. Yeah, because then um, the other two cards that came out to clarify that hanged man are the Ten of Cups and the Chariot, but they came out like this. And that tells me, because like if it comes out like this way, sideways in that direction, that's like something that's like propelling you forward, and more so in a positive way. And then if it's um, coming out sideways in this you know, direction, that usually I see as something like either holding you back or, you know, weighing heavily on somebody. Um, so I'm getting, you, once you realized or suspected that somebody was doing something here, I think originally you wanted to give your all to this. But then you decided, no. It feels like a person, but it could definitely be like a work situation or something. Because it feels almost like... It feels almost like this person or this situation does not deserve your energy. Yeah, I feel like you, you wanted, it, like, okay, so the storyline that I'm getting right now is like, maybe there was somebody that you had feelings for, and you were ready to give them everything, because you saw them as their, as your happily ever after, you were ready to put in that work to go towards them, you saw them as your destiny, you saw this as something that was like written in the stars, meant to be, but then something comes to your awareness I think and whether it's through your intuition or through the 3d and through that knowledge you the energy that you were going to give to that person you took back instantly and I think that that was actually really smart and what you were supposed to be doing um, because especially if this is somebody that is playing games uh, wishy-washy up and down back and forth you don't des or you deserve to invest in something that is more stable and more um clearly meant for you because if somebody's truly meant for you there will be no question in your mind as to whether or not they like you as to have, whether or not they want to be with you as to as you know you won't have to um yeah, you won't have to wonder, worry, whatever. Um, yeah, because like, and this all feels like, yeah, this is you embodying the Queen of Swords. You're taking back that love and effort that you were going, going to invest into this, but you saw that there was something not quite right, and so you trusted that and you revoked it. Like, it almost feels like maybe you even thought, like, or 
uh, started to even show feelings towards this person. But then it's like the second you caught wind of whatever this is, you're just like, no, I made a mistake. That wasn't for you. <laughs> Cause like, it, it feels like at this point in your life, at this point in your journey, you've had so much of like giving to people situations that just do not deserve you. And you're just like, I am not going down that road again. Bye, see you later. I'm not interested. Like, and yeah, whatever it was, I think it was a ma major turn off to you. Yeah, it was definitely the ick, but like times a million. <laughs> like it was something significant. Um, bottom of the deck is the 10 of wands. I honestly see this as you having a vision of your future, either in this career or this relationship, um, whatever the situation is. You can see from 10 million miles away that your fate with this person, with this situation, would just be you being way overburdened. And again, I'm getting this feeling of like, I've already been there and done that. I do not want to go down that road again. <laughs> like I learned my lesson. Yeah, it feels like you can just see that this situation, this person is just nothing but trouble. And it's just going to wear you down over time. You're going to feel overworked, not appreciated doing all of the work, all of the effort. And you're just done. You're done with that part of your life. You're so done. Like you're, I'm like literally picking up on somebody that's just like, I'm so done of these types of people or these types of situations that I keep kind of repeating. It almost feels like maybe this is you literally learning your lesson in the moment. Like you're finally taking all of that internal work and applying it to your real life or something. And that's what it kind of feels like. Like you've been working on your self-care, self-love, spirituality, and like all of those things are in such a great balance. And then this person comes in and maybe they were wearing a mask at first and it was a very convincing mask. But then the second that you see something sketchy going on, you're like, mm -mm, no way, no way, I'm not doing that. Um, and I think that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And it's like through this whole process, I, I'm getting that, yeah, you are starting to, yeah, here's, oh, that's what it is. You're seeing things from a completely different perspective because maybe in the past you were willing to put up with these types of people or situations and you were like, in the past, you could have been like, oh, I can make it work or I can change them or I can fix them or, you know, whatever. And it's like, you're just too enlightened at this point in your journey. Like, there's just no way that you're going to go back and repeat those cycles, repeat those lessons that you've already learned. Like, and who knows how many times you had to learn this lesson before this person came in, you know? So it's like, you're just like, mm -mm. I'm going to conserve my energy, my love my energy, my mind, like everything. I'm gonna conserve it and not give it to those types of people. I'm gonna conserve it and give it to the people that are actually meant for me and will not be putting me through whatever this hell is. <laughs> yeah. I really like that. And so, I think this one is telling you that whatever this situation is, um or you know person that you're dealing with um you're ready to see them for who they are and see yourself as more valuable than that yeah like i think that's what this one is saying is just like you see the issues here and you are acting accordingly and it's all part of your path. It's all part of how things are supposed to be playing out for you. Um, it's really quite beautiful. I like that. Okay, let's go into the temperance card in the reverse, please and thank you, Spirit. What do you got for this temperance card in the reverse, please and thank you? Anything else for that temperance card? Anything else for that compass card, please and thank you.
book okay <laughs> okay uh, clarifying that temperance card in the reverse we got the moon the king of wands came out in this direction and then we have four of pentacles the emperor king of pentacles bottom of the deck is six of swords so this is so interesting Uh. Mm. <laughs> so what I'm seeing here is well I can't lie I'm seeing the connection between this king of wands and this temperance card because temperance does indicate Sagittarius Sar Sagittarius is a fire sign which the king of wands could be indicating so it could be a Sagittarius but it doesn't have to be could be somebody that kind of gives off fire energy, even if it's not in their chart. It could just be like they're kind of like, maybe they're charismatic, confident, uh, somebody that's that's good with people, um, knows how to get their way. Maybe this was like a situation in which you were manipulated into thinking that somebody was here to heal you, but it wasn't. Maybe it was this guy. But it's like, what you, oh, I see. This is a sneaky little booger. Mm. Anyways. This feels like somebody. Yeah, somebody deceived you, I think. This King of Wands. Because I feel like, also like, there's so many messages. Okay, so temperance card in the reverse, I was getting like maybe it was afraid of healing, but now I'm getting it as like the false hope of healing. And I feel like it was like this king of wands potentially that was like, yeah, I'm here for you. I'm here to help you heal or whatever. And then you believe them. But it's like, that wasn't the case. It wasn't healing for you. Um, also the moon card, you know, it has a lot to do with what is hidden. And so I almost am even getting like, maybe there were, maybe there were specific things that this person decided not to tell you. And those things, yeah, because a lot of people think that, you know, lying is only lying if you tell a lie, right? you speak that lie. But I do believe that withholding information makes you just as guilty of lying as somebody else. Because that's what I'm getting. They withheld certain information from you and left you in the dark. And maybe this person, you know, the wands, they do have a reputation. But I, you know, it, cause it's interesting because it's like the way it came out like this, I think that you were actually pretty enthusiastic about this person at one point. And maybe you thought whatever they were hiding wasn't that big of a deal because you didn't know what it was. And you're like, oh, well, it can't possibly be that bad. What bad, like, or what could it possibly be? But maybe this person was like hiding a whole ass, sorry, excuse my language, um, a whole person behind the scenes. get in that because it feels like oh yeah because then that king of wands was followed by the four of pentacles whatever the situation was it caused you to be so cut off from other things other people but i think maybe it was the like the Well, I think maybe this truth came to light eventually. 
and then it's like this person that you felt so drawn to you felt so magnetized towards even I think they let you down and then it's like you become very closed off after that point I'm almost getting this this feeling of like I have only myself to trust maybe you've had a rough go at it especially in relationships or something and it's so interesting because I feel like this is either what happened to you or is happening to you kind of going through this difficult time of like somebody doing something behind the scenes or hiding certain information from you you're super excited to go towards them because what you see on the surface looks good but then it's like something happened and you had some sort of wake-up call with this person and as a result of that wake-up call, it caused you to be very cut off, not only to them, but maybe to a lot of other people too, because the Emperor and the King of Pentacles follow after that Four of Pentacles. So I think this scrub, whoever did you dirty here, they cause you to be cut off and maybe withdrawn and like not really excited about interacting with everybody else because you're also like your chakras are closed off with this card and so it's like you're just not open to hearing what anybody else has to say and maybe you're still grieving this you know even if it wasn't a relationship you still have a right to grieve that connection that you thought you were going to have with someone um and also be sure to be kind to yourself as well going through that kind of situation because it's not your fault that you had feelings for somebody or it's not your fault that you were manipulated it's not your fault that this person decided to withhold certain information from you or like get your hopes up or whatever I think that you should be very kind with yourself if you're grieving this connection that you thought you were gonna have with someone um, but it definitely put a bad taste in your mouth and I feel like honestly I would have you I would usually say maybe this could be the same person here like the Emperor and the King of Pentacles could be the same person but I'm getting this could be two separate people and these are both like upright like really powerful beings and I honestly I think that I think you're gonna be coming into a time where you actually have really good options coming towards you but because of this past situation that was supposed to heal you but never did you're closed off to people that are actually not sneaky people that are respectful respectable people that actually have what it takes to back up the words that they say um very probably very honest people and they're talented in their own um, careers or their own um, hobbies interests like these are talented uh, powerful and abundant people and so it's like I think that after this king of wands kind of played you is what it feels like um, I think you're going to be very much mistrusting of anybody else that tries to come in towards you. And I don't blame you. I really don't. Because that sounds like a really BS situation. Um, I don't remember if I showed you, but <laughs> bottom of the deck is the Six of Swords. But um, yeah, to me, this is saying that... Honestly, this, this feels like spirit... And maybe this is what it's trying to say, that you're ready to release that past person and open up to the new potentials that are coming in. Because I feel like it could be like as soon um, as you release this person or as soon as you finally like realize who this person is, there's going to be two other people that are going to be trying to come and uh, get your attention. And these are actually people that are, you know, maybe the people that you thought the King of Wands was, but he wasn't in reality. Um, and I'm using he as just because I'm referring to the king, but um, you can apply it to any gender. 
Um, but yeah, it's like you got two really good options coming towards you, but I feel like you don't want to hear it because you're like, I just really got screwed over and I don't even want to think about love. And so I see this as you coming out of a time of things looking really bleak. And I think that's this energy, you know, being screwed over by somebody. You're coming out of that time and you're going towards like a future that actually has hope of growth and hope of prosperity. Like it's going to give, I feel like you're, you're opening a door to things that are going to be way more fulfilling for you. And it almost feels like it's, it's almost coming to you as a result of you knowing your worth. Because, like, maybe you were really, like, set on this King of Wands here, but maybe the second you realize that this person was being dishonest, not telling you the full truth, manipulating you potentially, um, manipulating your emotions definitely, it feels like. Um, you're just like, okay. Uh, honestly, I think that's what it is. I think this Four of Pentacles is indicating you just go into shutdown mode after that happens and maybe you don't even really mean it to be you know closed off or whatever but I think that you naturally because it's almost like nah that's what it feels like it feels like you just started to let down your walls around somebody and then they betrayed you and so now those walls come back up and maybe they're even harder to get through now and I feel like that's really sad because that's gonna like prevent you from experiencing really good people and situations. Because like with that four of pentacles, usually I get like more so of like, you know, a lack mindset being um, attached to this. But um, to me, and like the lack mindset is what causes um, the figure to be holding on to those pentacles, in my opinion, or and most of the, of the time when I read it, but this context is giving me that you may be holding on, um, not necessarily to this person, but the idea of that person. Like, so it's like, maybe, yeah, maybe it's like, this is why I don't trust people. Um, like it almost feels like, it's not that you are holding on to that person, but you're holding on to how that person made you feel. And if you're like lingering in that mindset and in that energy of like heartbreak or, you know, betrayal, devastation, it's almost like you may be, yeah, you may be just really closed off to new opportunities that are trying to be way more positive than you experienced with this other person. But it's almost like you don't want to hear it because you've like, you know, yeah, like, it really does feel like this person caused you to lower down your walls and it feels like you were like you had your walls up for maybe quite some time and that's probably why this hurts so badly and why you're still holding on to it um and also it could be fresh and that's why you're holding on to it as well but um and it's like yeah like what kind of like that's probably one of the most hard harsh betrayals there could be you know, you're finally starting to let down your wall around somebody like, oh, I can finally trust this person. And then it's like, boom, they betray you. Boom, you see the truth of them. And it hurts, you know, it really, really hurts. But I feel like... It feels like, you know, that you're naturally going to be sort of embodying this six of swords energy of you leaving something behind going towards something else that is way more hopeful and so i feel like this is the natural maybe process of this and maybe this is just spirit trying to remind you that you're ready for situations in which you don't get hurt and people connections with people that do not lie or withhold information I honestly think that this could have definitely, 
I think you're going to be entering a time of overthinking too after dealing with that person that betrayed you because it's like, I think it's going to trigger a lot of your feelings of like self-doubt, um, insecurities, um, and like mindsets that like maybe you thought you were healing from, but now they all get like brought back up to the surface because this person, you know, triggered you betrayed you and caused you to step into this energy of oop I lost my train of thought pretty much like mindsets are going to be like a big part of this I think and like you taking time to sort of really consider this whole situation and the 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 outcome that this situation has on your mindsets your confidence yeah so it could be that you're like also needing time to kind of take a step back and it's interesting because it kind of brings me back to that four of swords that we had at the beginning of the reading um this could have led you into this four of swords energy in which you're taking time out to focus on yourself maybe rebuild up your confidence rebuild up your self-esteem you know maybe more positive affirmations to drown out the negative thoughts that you've been having and maybe then you'll be able to open up to the new opportunities that are coming towards you after you sort of take that time for yourself because i think that that time for yourself is going to be very important um Otherwise, you may not see the opportunities that are there for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's like once you take, or yeah, once you go into that Four of Swords energy and come out of it, I think you're going to be in a much more balanced, level-headed sort of, um, yeah, much more self-assured energy. And then you'll be able to open up to the, options that you have on the horizon um so it definitely feels like it's kind of all part of this grand scheme and you know the storyline um so even if it feels really rough maybe this is exactly how it's supposed to happen in order for the best possible outcome to happen I'm also getting that this could even be sort of indicating that spirit may have a surprise for you when you least expect it. Because like maybe when you're at your rock bottom or I don't I don't want to say like that this person caused you to be at your rock bottom because that sounds maybe a little bit um, too dramatic or maybe that's giving this person a little too much power. But um, it feels like uh, spirit may surprise you after this really difficult situation ends. Um, because I almost see you like maybe even being in a like a little bit more of a down spirit, um, you know, like just kind of low energy, low enthusiasm and just like, when am I ever going to catch a break? Like you might be in a little bit of that sort of energy and then something really good comes in for you, I think. And it catches you off guard, but in a positive way. And it could be one or both of these options or something else entirely. Could be that... um you know, abundance for yourself. Who knows, maybe through this, you know, breakup sort of energy, you start to focus more so on your career and, you know, your projects and stuff. And then you may have a lot of success with that when you pour all your energy into that. So again, it may suck in the moment, but it may be exactly what you need in order to receive the blessings and opportunities when they are made available to you. Okay, let's go on to the Two of Cups now. Okay, the Lady Spirit. Anything else for that Two of Cups? Okay, the Lady Spirit. These ones flew out. I'm excited to see what these ones are. Ooh. I like this one a lot. Okay. Clarifying that Two of Cups, we have... King of Swords, Knight of Wands, 
the star card. The star card always comes out for y'all. The temperance card upright. So that temperance card that was in the reverse, which I feel like was indicating that king of wands energy, somebody that was supposed to be healing for you or you thought was going to be healing for you, but ended up not being, I think now you're going to be, um, receiving the healing that you wanted this past person to be but didn't receive i think you're going to be experiencing something that's actually healing for you which is going to feel so good for you i think um and also it's interesting that you were embodying the queen of swords earlier and now we have the king of swords this could be somebody that you feel is like a really good match for you especially on like a mental psychological um level intellectual level even like i feel like you two may have like things that are very much like in common um like maybe special interests and stuff is kind of what i'm getting like although like some people say that the king and queen of swords are a divorce couple i don't always pick up on that sort of energy like i think that sometimes they can be a couple that is just like very intellectually compatible like somebody that like you could talk to for hours on end and never get bored. You know, that's the kind of energy that I get sometimes with that king and queen uh, pairing of swords. Um, Cause you know, the swords are all about like ideas, thoughts, information. I feel like it's kind of like, you know, you're just like, and not to say that physical attraction and other stuff doesn't come with that, but it's like, maybe that's like the part that you, adore most about this person is that like you two just click mentally you know maybe you both have very similar mindsets or similar outlooks on life or um you have similar goals even and you can work together to achieve those goals like it feels like you're very much going to be coming into a time where you meet your intellectual match yeah the knight of wands In this context, it feels almost like this could be um, this King of Swords coming in as a Knight of Wands energy to maybe, you know, open the door slightly, you know, with some flirting, maybe, you know, dipping a toe in to see if the water's warm <laughs> or something like, like it feels like, yeah, maybe they want to like kind of like flirt first to kind of gauge your your feelings about them or how you perceive them. They might kind of embody that more flirtatious sort of spirit to kind of get your attention at first. And then maybe the more you talk to this person, you see like that intellectual side to them. And also it could be that this person may come across as maybe a slightly like a player. And so maybe like at first you're like, mm, I don't know about this person, but then like the more you get to know them, you're like, oh, you're actually like really smart and interesting. Yeah, and then it's like with that star card at the um, at the end of this, I feel like ooh, okay. I'm getting the message that this is somebody that sees you as the star, and they would like to help support support like your purpose is what I'm getting. Like, it feels like this person can see that you're meant for something very significant here. Like, they see your power. They see how divinely connected you are. Like, how you are able to heal not only yourself, but others. Like, there's, like, a, a bigger plan um, for you is what this person sees. And so they would like to help you with achieving your goals or achieving your plan or reaching that height in order for you to do the most good like this feels like somebody that sees you for actually who you are and how amazing you are and it feels like they really want to be a good support for you this person may be really good at compliments as well Maybe this is a person that gives like really deep compliments, like not like shallow compliments, but like more so like, I love the way that your mind works or, 
you know, I, I love your interest in this topic or, you know, like, or I love that you're curious or I love that you love to learn or like, you know, like there's certain like compliments that are like so beyond, you know, just the physical or the basic, you know, compliments that you may receive. Um, and it shows that this person like truly understands you and knows you. Like you're not just another person, like you are this person specifically and they can name all the ways in which you are unique. Like it feels like this is somebody that's gonna see you as you truly are and love that, you know? And this is all clarifying that two of cups. So I feel like maybe you don't see this, especially if you're still kind of grieving this loss of this player from the past. Um, but I think this is what this is saying is like this next relationship that you enter into is going to be quite ideal for you. Like you're going to feel connected on an intellectual level. I think that there will be attraction um, and passion. So it's not going to get boring. And they see you as this bright star meant to do great things with your life. And they want to support that. I honestly feel like this is going to be somebody that is so compatible with you. Like, in ways that maybe you thought you could never find in another person. Like, there's something about the compatibility here that feels, like, so significant. But it doesn't feel as if it starts out that way. That's the interesting thing. I feel like this person may be unassuming, if that's the word. Like, it feels like something about this person you may overlook at first or write off at first. But it's like the more you get to know, like, it's something like looking beneath the surface. Like, it feels like on the surface, this person could maybe. And, you know, if they are the King of Swords, um, they, maybe they have like a dry sense of humor or um, maybe they're slightly socially awkward or something or, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe they're not super emotional right off the bat. So like maybe there's certain things like that where you first meet them and interact with them and you're like, I don't know if this is what I'm looking for. Because, like, well, actually, you might be used to people love bombing you. And maybe this person doesn't do that. And maybe this is somebody that, like, kind of has to get to know you more or, like, has to, like, bond with you on a deeper level before they start, you know, expressing those kinds of feelings. Which, honestly, that feels like a healthy thing to do. I know that we would, like, a lot of the time, you know, we go into relationships hoping that that person's gonna love us, right? And so when they start to love bomb us at the beginning of the connection, we, I think, usually look at it as like, this is exactly what I asked for. Somebody that actually sees my value, somebody that actually loves me. But we don't realize in that moment that that's all just a facade or that it indicates something a little bit more um, suspicious I guess um and but I think maybe this person is much more healthier when it comes to relationships um I mean this is all clarifying the two of cups and the two of cups is usually like a very compatible match as well as uh, equal give and take and stuff I think that this is somebody that is very reasonable when it comes to love um I think that this problem Honestly, yeah, maybe this person is like pretty mature um, when it comes to love and that could be different for you because I, I think that maybe you're used to people kind of like trying to, you know, butter you up and stuff right off the bat and so that you trust them right away. But maybe this person's not really into that. I think that they just prefer being honest, especially because they are the King of Swords. I feel like they're going to be way more honest um, and real and maybe at first that could be a turn off for you but like the more you interact with them talk to them it feels like it's gonna open you up a little bit more and you're gonna be like okay okay maybe this person's not as like boring as i thought or not as harsh as i thought or not as 
um, unfeeling as I thought, you know? But yeah, especially, uh, I just think it's so poetic that the temperance card happens to be at the bottom of the deck because it's like, this person is going to put right all that that past person uh, put wrong, I guess. <laughs> like, it's going to give you everything that you wished that that past person was. But like, this is the real deal now. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, I think this person's going to actually be quite different than the past person that you thought you had something with. And I think that that may throw you off at first and you may not be into that. But it's like, I think it's all good. Like, I don't know if that's making any sense, but it's like, I feel like you're going to just really enjoy that because like all of the ways in which they are different from that past person are what makes them so perfect for you, you know? Like, I feel like this person's going to be way more likely to be honest with someone than um, than charming or, you know, like, it, like they're not going to want to people please is what I'm getting. Like, they would rather just say the truth. And I feel like maybe that King of Wands from your past may have been more of like a people pleaser or, you know, maybe not even that, but just manipulative and trying to, you know, be seen as charming rather than being an upstanding individual, if that makes any sense. But I feel like the differences, it's going to be kind of like night and day, to be honest, I think. Um, and not to say that they're going to be completely different. I think there there could be like maybe slight similarities, but overall, I think you're going to see like a, a big difference between the two of these people. Um, because like this is the person that's actually going to give you the healing that you deserve and desire out of a connection. It's like this is what spirit truly wants for you. Yeah. And it's like you're ready for that healing as well. Maybe that's what spirit's trying to tell you with this one is like you're ready for a relationship that heals you. And that could be something that you're not very used to or that hasn't been your experience when it comes to love. It's like, yeah, this is actually going to heal you and you're ready for that healing to take place. And you're ready for somebody that's actually going to be there for you and support you and want to do that genuinely, you know? That's actually really beautiful. I like that a lot. Okay, so that's the reading. I really hope that you enjoyed this. Um, I hope that it resonated. If it resonated, feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you subscribe, you can become a part of that. Hive Collective, because my name is B, B's Luan Hives, and you can become an honorary bee like me, and we can be a little bee family together. <laughs> um, if you like my readings, if you'd like to see more, be sure to click that bell icon down below so that YouTube actually notifies you next time I upload. And thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate you, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.